What is up everyone? Today on this episode of Real Chemistry, we're going to learn how to draw polypeptides. First up, what's a polypeptide? Well, a polypeptide is multiple amino acids linked together by a peptide bond. So here below, we see one amino acid. In this case, our side chain is represented by this R. And we see a second amino acid. So this orange and red amino acid are going to link up with each other. A couple things to notice here. When we look at each of these amino acids, they follow this really specific pattern, NCC, NCC. And we're going to take advantage of that NCC pattern to really easily write polypeptides. All right, another thing to notice is that the side chain is always connected to the carbon that's just to the right of the nitrogen in that pattern. So here's the alpha carbon, we call it, okay? And then the side chain, which we see here as a R, is always connected to that. On that alpha carbon, we also have a hydrogen to finish off that bond, right? We need the carbon to have four bonds, so that gets it to four bonds. Okay, enough about looking at that amino acid. Now let's take a look at the formation of the peptide bond. Well, what happens is an OH and an H come off of our C and N terminuses. So when our C terminus and our N terminus lose an H and an OH, we get off an H2O, and we link up to make a peptide bond. When we look at this peptide bond, notice that it has a carbonyl, that is a C, double bonded to an oxygen, and it has our nitrogen, single bonded to a hydrogen. So that's always what our peptide bond is going to look like. Further, notice that on the ends of our polypeptide here, we have an NH, and on the right-hand side, we have a COOH group, or a carboxylic acid group, right? Notice those didn't change as the peptide bond formed, and that's what you'd expect, right? The only thing that's changing, just like we've seen in all our organic chemistry reactions, is where that actual reaction is going, removing that water. So the ends of our polypeptide are always gonna remain unchanged. One last thing to note before we just dive right into drawing these things is that when you see NH2 on the end of our polypeptide, sometimes you'll have a list of amino acids which draw this as NH3 plus, and you'll see the C terminus drawn as C double O and a single bond O minus. The reason is, is that at physiological pH, that is the pH of our bodies, those are charged. And so sometimes you'll see them charged. And in fact, the list we're gonna use will show them charged. Okay, let's go through five steps to always get a polypeptide right. We wanna draw the polypeptide composed of serine and threonine. Every single amino acid has a three digit abbreviation or a three letter abbreviation. And in this case, we have serine followed by threonine. Okay, so we wanna link those two together. How do we do that? Well, step one is we're going to take advantage of that NCC pattern for each amino acid. So in this case, we have two amino acids. So we're going to draw NCC, NCC. We're going to draw two of those units. And once we do that, we're going to add our side chains. That's step two. And the side chains are always going to go on our alpha carbon. Remember that the alpha carbon is just to the right of our nitrogen. So we got two alpha carbons here and here. And that makes sense because we have two amino acids which are going to have two side chains. So let's go ahead and add the side chains. That's kind of maybe the hardest part. So on serine, which is our first amino acid, right? Notice the order here is serine then threonine. And so we want to grab the side chain for serine first, which is CH2OH. So we're just going to draw a bond going down to CH2OH. All right, then we have threonine, which is going to go, the side chain is going to go on our next alpha carbon. And notice the side chain here is going down to a carbon over to an OH, down to CH3, and then over to one more hydrogen. Now those side chains, if you have to memorize them, then this is gonna be coming from memory. Uh, in my classes, we don't gotta memorize them. You just look at the list, it's sweet. Okay, now step three, we wanna add a hydrogen to those alpha carbons, and that's just to complete that carbon to make it have four bonds, right? So we need to have our hydrogen going up here, just like it really did on that original amino acid list. Okay, the ends of the polypeptide chain are going to remain unchanged, and so that means where we have the nitrogen on the end, we're going to get NH3+, and where we have a carbon on the end, we're going to get COO-. minus. Notice that's exactly the same thing we had written over here on our amino acids, COO-, minus and NH3+. Plus. Okay, now last step, and that's really where we are going to start adding things to the peptide bond, is the remaining N gets a hydrogen, and the C gets a a double bond to two an oxygen. So here we get a hydrogen and a double bond to an oxygen. This is our peptide bond. That's what's linking those two amino acids. Okay, so that's a polypeptide with just two amino acids. Let's practice this again and let's use three amino acids. In this case, we have glycine, 
alanine and leucine, okay? And we wanna link those together. So first let's just circle them on our little chart down here. We got glycine, we got leucine, and we have alanine. So let's go ahead and make that polypeptide. We start in the same spot as drawing NCC for each one. So this time we have three. So we're going to do NCC, NCC, and then one more NCC. Notice because we have three amino acids, we've drawn this three times. And we're going to end up with two peptide bonds to link the three amino acids. Okay, so that's step one. Now we want to go ahead and add to the alpha carbon our side chains. Here's the first one, uh, second alpha carbon and the third alpha carbon, always the ones just to the right of that nitrogen if we follow this pattern. The first amino acid we wanna draw is glycine. It's side chain, super boring, just a hydrogen. And so we're gonna add just a hydrogen on that first alpha carbon. The next alpha carbon, we're gonna go ahead and add the side chain for alanine, which is a CH3 group. And then for our last alpha carbon, we will add the side chain for leucine, which is by far our most complicated side chain. We got CH2 down to a CH, and then it branches into two methyl groups, CH3 and CH3. Okay, so we got our side chains. Now let's go ahead and add an H to each alpha carbon. So every alpha carbon needs that H to get to four bonds. And that completes the alpha carbon. It's totally happy, it's got its four bonds. The ends of the polypeptide uh, need our charged groups. So on the nitrogen side, we once again put NH3 and a plus side. And on our C side, we put COO and a minus sign. Okay, now the remaining carbons and nitrogens need to be filled in. The carbon needs a double bond to an oxygen. So there's two carbons that have not had anything done to them. They're both a part of the peptide bonds. And the nitrogen, in each case, is going to have a hydrogen. So here, notice that we have one, two peptide bonds linking them up. Okay, so that's how we can draw a polypeptide by following these simple five steps. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry.